Hello, good morning and welcome. My name is Christine Reimer and I lead customer experience and advocacy at SurveyMonkey. And I'd like to welcome you to our series, uh, CX Confessions, uh, a chance to have authentic, real conversations about how to lead uh, customer experience programs with some of the best of the best. And I've got one of them here today, my good friend, Brandon McGovern, welcome. Thank you, thank you. Thank you for having me and I'm, I'm delighted to be here. Um, I, uh, Brandon and I uh, met a few months ago and we've been chatting about uh, how things are going, but let's uh, make sure folks know who you are. Would you mind uh, introducing yourself? Yeah, definitely. So Brandon McGovern, I uh, lead our customer experience strategy uh, at HP, specifically in the customer support organization. Um, you know, HP is a really large organization. Um, we, uh, I'm with the side of HP that makes primarily PCs and printers. And, um, but, and we have about 50,000 employees worldwide. So we have, uh, it's, it's a very interesting business. It's a very dynamic business. Um, we operate pretty much in every country uh, legally that we're allowed to uh, in, in selling our, our products and servicing and supporting them. Awesome. We, and uh, so uh, super, super helpful, always really, uh, helpful to have that context of when we talk about leading customer experience, it's often positioned as like, you know, one type of customer and one geo, but in fact, it's, you know, there's global, there's all these different business units and so many employees to, to influence. How long have you been in the role, but at HP and in the role? Yeah. So I've been with HP for 10 years. Um, and in this particular role, I've only been for about a month and a half, uh, which is interesting. I've been in CX with HP for probably about six of those 10 years. Um, and I've gotten a chance. So, so uh, at HP, we have a very, what I think of as a decentralized uh, customer experience. Uh, well, it's a decentralized function. We have it in each one of our business groups and, and major functions. And so I've had an opportunity to rotate through different business groups and building and, and driving our voice of customer and driving uh, that, that CX strategy in our PC business and our print business and now in the support organization. So new to new to this role, but uh, not new to HP, not new to, uh, to, to this industry either. Yeah, lots, uh, I mean, <clears throat> and we'll, we'll get into how, how one, you know, drives action to actually improve the yeah. experience, but certainly, your tenure, the relationships you've built, the business context you have of those different groups uh, uh, is is so uh, beneficial as you move into a role of, of influencing a, a decentralized program. But uh, your timing is fascinating. So you move into this role, if I'm doing my math, it's uh, yes. right as the world uh, the world changed. So uh, it's it's hard to have a conversation around, you know, what are your 2020 plans without exactly pausing? So first of all, let's just kind of ground you're 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 at home, obviously. Um, at home. I am. So, who are you sheltering in place with? So we know who's in the boat with you. Yeah, yeah. They, for all we know, they may run in the room in the next two minutes. But <laughs> um, yeah, so so I'm at home, um, and I uh, just like everybody else, um, with my family, uh, my wife and two kids. I have two two young kids, a two year old and a four year old, and I'll tell you what juggling them with two working parents is is definitely a challenge for us um you know but it's also in some ways a blessing we we're, we're really getting just to i feel like know them at a different level and engage with them at a different level and really watch them grow so uh it, it's been fun it's been hard <laughs> you know i think that's how most people are feeling about it yeah yeah no no similar my my kids are older i'm with uh, i'm at home with my has been working. I texted the family right before we started to say, just a reminder, please uh, give mom some space. Uh, yeah. I have two teenage, uh, a, a 13 and a 14 year old. So uh, they are presumably off and running on their school uh, so far, but I'll, I'll check in after. Um, all right, so that's where we're, we're leading our positions or doing our roles from, from our homes. Um, so Brandon, you had a set of plans for customer experience and focused on the support organization. And then uh, this, this massive shift and wrinkle in the universe happened. So tell me a bit about how you were thinking about the program before 
uh, 30 days ago and then yeah. how things have changed. Have they changed and in what way? Yeah, so, you know, in some ways they've changed and in some ways they haven't. Let, let me dissect that a little bit. You know, um, we've always wanted to drive as much action and much, as much, uh, as much customer insight to action as we could throughout the organization, really understanding those customers, this customer sentiment. And we've all, but we have a variety of channels that we go through. Um, as you mentioned, uh, you know, it's, it's a large organization. We have, we have B2B, we have B2C, we have um, different routes to market through each of those. So we have all these different journeys that we have to um, have to enable. And so in 2020, we were looking at how do we do even, how do we raise the bar and how we're stitching it all together better? How do we really get a better view into end of those experiences? We do a very, very good job listening at each touch point, but looking at it end to end. That's become ever more important as, um, as the world has shifted. The shifting of this world has, we're all at home. Digital, uh, I, I would call our digital transformation has certainly accelerated. We've had to make some shifts in, in how, how we operate um, pretty dramatically and pretty much overnight. So, uh, but the core of our, the, of, of our objectives, you know, stitching it together yeah. remains actually even more important as that business environment has shifted because now we're, we're in new territory and um, where, we, where we were focused may not be, you know, we may need to lower that focus and focus uh, in other areas uh, it, more quickly um but really achieving the same objectives totally totally makes sense yeah. here's what i i heard there were kind of three elements uh mm -hmm. that really struck me and i i want to kind of hit on each of them one is uh oh yeah when you said fifty thousand employees home overnight um servicemen contact center folks um and expect them to be productive and help customers uh what's that employee experience um the second is your comment of you know the importance of uh, thinking about customer experience and how it all stitches together the importance of that holistic experience uh, so yeah. easy to say so hard to do um and then the third is the the <laughs> we've all, I mean, we've been on this digital transformation for a decade, right? Yeah. And um, we all know how important it is uh, because our customers are interacting with our brands um, and looking them up first digitally, but yet uh, it's never been more important in this environment where, you know, the, the direct human interactions are less than the digital experience. So let's first hit on the employee so, you know, the, the world starts to shift. You send 50,000 people at home and you're talking about, you know, continue to deliver a great customer experience that HP expects. Just give me a sense of what's, what's that looked like. Oh, wow. Um, you know, the whole employee experience has, has, has shifted. And, and one of the great things about, about the culture in HP is that we, we've always, and, and, and many tech companies, right? We, we've always been, um, We've had a flexible work environment. We've been uh, at least some of the some of the employees. Uh, we've been able to work from home as needed and things like that. So we were some of us were able to make the shift pretty quickly and and seamlessly. But as you mentioned, you know, um, call centers are 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 physical locations, and sending all of those home uh, require kind of a whole different way of thinking about um, various elements of how do you. How do you enable access to some of these tools, which which, um, you know, which is a challenge in and of itself? Um, customer privacy and how do we think about that when now everything's distributed at home? You know, and, and how do we make sure that we're? It requires a whole other level of training of, of employees and how you want to think about how you enable that, right? Um, I think the company has done a fantastic job in thinking through a lot of these challenges. We're doing. Um, there's there's literally daily activities or you know webcast or different types of trainings that we can we can um, attend just to kind of get a better sense of how to operate in this environment. Um, uh, really, at all levels of the organization, we have we have professionals coming to talk to us about uh, how to how to lead in this environment, how to how to how to manage your various programs uh, cross functionally when everybody's uh, not in the office anymore. So, so, you know, I think there's a lot of tools at our disposal, but really we're all learning through this together. Um, and, and 
trying to take rapid action, but, uh, and, and then it's interesting. It's the whole VOC approach. You, you might, you take a rapid action and then you, you really have to listen to what's happening with your employee base and, and respond to that. And so we're, we're getting better at that actually through this process. Interesting. Yeah, it's, you know, for, for years, I was at uh, Intuit for a number of years, and we'd always talk about engaged employees. If you have engaged employees, they can deliver greatness and value to their customers and the shareholders will win. And so there's always been this association of you can't, if you're thinking about the customer experience you're delivering, you have to think about how you are setting your employees up from, you know, leadership to frontline folks to deliver and yet to your to your point i mean i think we're all experiencing that right now of you you have to be laser focused because every employee's so many employees work environment is so fundamentally shifted right and in order to say we want you to deliver this great experience to your customers you have to back out and see if folks are set up for success yeah it's so true and well said i mean i, I think it's it's a huge it's a huge part of the equation, um, and I think this whole situation has put more focus on, on um, because we've had to rethink, we've had to rethink um, how we enable that that employee experience uh, in this new environment. So it makes us, it's it's actually given us more opportunity to maybe take on some bigger challenges or bigger risks that maybe we weren't comfortable doing beforehand. Yeah. Um, it's unfortunate that it took such a pandemic for that to happen. But at the same time, you know, with change comes opportunity to, 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 to react differently. Absolutely. Never, never waste a good crisis. Yeah, um, yeah. <laughs> yeah, we, uh, Brandon and I joined a, a number of other uh, uh, customer experience leaders and mostly in the Silicon Valley uh, last week for a a virtual roundtable just to share how all of our programs are changing. And it was one of the themes, Brandon, I, I'm curious, it struck me of, um, you know, there's so much that's so difficult right now, but there is this element of, um, for those who are really passionate about thinking about customer experience, this element of it's never been more important to listen, right? You can't just say, yep. I, I mean, what's not okay right now is to say, oh, I gathered some feedback um, in October. And yeah. so you, know, like, you have to be listening. You have to be listening from a position of authentically wanting to take that in and say, so what? And you need to do something about it. So there was this element that of like almost hope and opportunity and to your point, a real forcing function of say things like digital transformation or initiatives that just you couldn't mobilize folks and now you have no choice. So um, I love that you're kind of hitting hitting on that. Any any thoughts on just sort of the opportunity to be more customer centric? Yeah, you know, I think, I think um, I, I'll throw a couple of thoughts at you. You know, first, I think there's the element of um, with, with all this change, it's the truth is it's not just that we're working from home. And and our work environments changed. It's it's that the business strategies are changing. Yeah, yeah. And and so we have to we have to kind of think of our programs with some flexibility. We need to be nimble around how we how we operate and and um, and make sure that what the things that we're asking and the things that we're listening for are um, are relevant to where the business is going or what the business is thinking or, or and, and some of those strategic questions. Um, and now more than ever, through periods of rapid change, you want to be very focused on on um, what those business strategies are, how you're linking what you're what you're listening for to that. Um, and then the other point I'll make is, and I'm going to steal, I think something, I think it was something that you said. I'm going to I'm going to repurpose your words, but it's, it's to listen listen in the now, right? Listen, what was said maybe three months ago is almost outdated. Um, you know, there are certainly some elements if you're if you're looking at parts of the experience that that it's very relevant and, and it still matters. But um, some of the priorities from three months ago have shifted as we listen to today, right? As we listen to the challenges that our customers are having today, our partners are having today, our employees are having today, and responding to those, um, it's it's more important. It's very important to, to keep that flexibility, but to keep focused in the moment. Yeah. Um, you know, sometimes we have a tendency to look at trends. Um, how is a metric trending? How is a certain um, sentiment of a certain topic trending? And while all of that is still important, um, I think right now, since so much is changing, focusing on <laughs> what 
regardless of the trend, where are we today? What's coming out today? Yeah, I couldn't agree more. I I was looking at some of the efforts that I'm that we're doing with our program, and and absolutely, you know, so much about customer experience. We talk about the measurement, the ROI, exactly the what's the number and where is it trending, and we know that there's this this just equally important part of the storytelling, the emotions, the understanding how you're showing up. And, yep. uh, and so I, I couldn't agree more. And we, we see this, right? We see some businesses being a bit tone deaf or not showing up in the right way. And it's, it, it's in a, such an emotionally loaded time. You're, you're just, you're, you're missing an opportunity to connect with your customers in an authentic, in an authentic way. If you're not, you have to be in the now and in the moment and truly listening for, for to, to meet folks where they're at um, and you can't yeah. ignore the emotions. Yeah, we've, and, and to the point even <laughs> even more tactically on, on our, our um, surveys and questions and, and things that we're asking, we have made some changes um, just in light of the current environment, right? First, we yeah. have um, actually some of our relationship surveys we've elected to turn off. We, we just think that it's not the right time to be asking relationship surveys. Um, because we want to be more focused on um, making sure the transactional stuff is working and, and not burdening people and trying to get to uh, ask for too much feedback when when people's minds everyone's going through a lot of uh, a lot of chaos, right? So we're trying to respect those relationships, but um, but also still be present. And and then for the ones that um, the surveys, you know, we didn't turn off all of our surveys or anything like that. We um, for the surveys that specifically around the transactional ones that we still have going, we did change the language that we're using, um, and in some cases the question, to make sure that we, we're it is a more authentic type of a question, so that we're getting more relevant feedback of the of the current environment, and we're also not overburdening our customers with continually asking them just tone deaf questions. <laughs> no, I, I completely agree. We we talk a lot at. Uh... At SurveyMonkey, you know, in terms of uh, having helped customers for you know twenty years, listen listen to customers through our survey tools, and now uh, um, with a suite of customer experience tools, um, we talk a lot about you know customer experience programs are about ask and then analyze and act, mm -hmm. and so many organizations and and you hit on this um, a bit around. Uh, how do you drive action? So yeah. many of us are in a position where, you know feel reasonably good at what we're asking, you know, is it the right question in what channel and what context? And then are you in a position to analyze those, um, the, the so what out of this and make a series of recommendations? And where so many CX leaders are find themselves frustrated uh, is, okay, I've listened to customers and I have these yeah. insights and these recommendations and these opportunities, and they just can't get their organization to act on it. It just doesn't get prioritized relative to other initiatives. And you brought up something that I have, uh, it, you know, completely agree with, which is, you know, you also you you have to understand the business strategy. You have to understand where those priorities and how is customer feedback feeding into that. So tell me a bit about how you think about, you know, the insights you get and how you drive action and and why. Is, is that business strategy and aligning to it so important in terms of getting action? Yeah, no, it, it's it's fundamental. It's core to really a successful program to, from my perspective is, is understanding. It really comes down to understanding what are the business objectives that you're, you're trying to drive toward alongside your business leadership. Um, and, you know, are, are we looking to grow um, it? It's depending on which segment and which product, are, are, is it a is it a growth segment? Are you trying to just retain? Are you trying, you know, and um, and how does that coming through really through your into your PNL? And then how does how are the insights that you're bringing to the table helping to enable that? Um, if you can talk to your business leaders or, mm -hmm. or your business in the context of their overall business objectives, versus uh, using too much soft language, as I call it, like. You know, we're really just trying to make customers happy, um, which which is we're, boy, it's actually what we're trying to do. Uh, <laughs> but you know, when you tie it back to um, to the to really the business objective of uh, that that everyone is is mapping against, you can really start making a bigger impact and showing the value um, 
and showing how um, it really tuning those listening posts to, to helping the business get better insight, right? Um, and, and keeping that focus, uh, making decisions based on customer insight versus kind of the gut or, or something like that. Uh, it, when, it, when, it, when it's lacking, the decisions are still gonna get made um, in, in many cases, right? Yeah, I, I couldn't agree more. I, I ran or helped establish the custo- voice of customer program at SurveyMonkey and uh, ran the program in 2017. And I, I took a what I call the traditional CX approach, well-intentioned, right? Yeah. Lots of listening posts, auditing, you know, these amazing synthesis. I worked with this uh, wonderful analyst who helped pull together those insights and then showed up to product teams who... <laughs> who of course had roadmaps that were spec'd out, you know, six, 12, 18 months in advance. Sure. Look at this awesome insight and how can we take action this quarter? And just, you know, we got, we got some efforts done based on that feedback. And of course we were listening, you know, through multiple channels, but in 2020, I've shifted that focus to really start by understanding. It doesn't mean you don't still have those broad listening programs, but by really understanding what are the parts of the experience that is a priority and how could in the moment customer feedback relevant to that part of the experience help our teams make better decisions, help them to deliver a better experience. And so, right. yeah, I, I couldn't agree more. And it's, I think the, um, it's a bit, I find it a bit, it can be uncomfortable because, you know, we think about listening broadly and everywhere and and um being in the driver's seat of what mm-hmm. should be done but unless you're also meeting the business where it's at and where the priorities are you're just you you can find yourself blindly yelling into the wind yeah no it, it's true and, and 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 it's not that people it's not that it's not that your your product teams or your marketing team are uh, are are aren't empathetic and, and don't care about that customer feedback. It's just that that's not what's top of mind for them right now. Yeah. And and they're working to prioritize all the feedback that they're getting. So if you understand their priorities and, and bring it back to them in their language um, at the right time, yes. you can, uh, it translates to quicker action, right? Um, because roadmaps are long. You, you, you build out, they, we have multi-year roadmaps that are already built and, and yeah. trying to influence that. Um, it, it can definitely be done and it all should be done from a customer lens, but, you know, being better connected with it helps, um, helps actually make a p- program much, much more connected or more successful. I, I agree. I'm, I'm getting ready to kind of roadshow a set of results uh, that we had in, in from a March um, from, from our yeah. Q1 program. And absolutely, you know, you looked at some of those insights and, and if you're not, thinking about the, the now and what folks are working on. And, you know, if I went in blind with like, oh, there's this, you know, this hot spot of feedback and over here, if you're not partnering with and being supportive and helping have, you know, your cross-functional team have the wins on behalf of our customers, like be able to deliver for customers, it has to be in that context. I, I agree. Yeah. We, we all, I often think of it as dynamic versus static programs, right? Uh, you, you need some element of having some static KPIs that you're measuring perhaps um, over time because that does help with, with some of the storytelling, but you also need that dynamic. And especially in this environment, you need, you need to be dynamic. We need to be thinking about how do we ask relevant questions? How do we, how do we listen in the now and ask in the now? And, um, and all... I would venture to say every business has a shifting set of business priorities right now. Um, it may be just to retain. That may be the whole focus right now. Um, even for for growth, growth, uh, growth businesses, right? We just need to make sure that we're retaining and that we're taking care of our employees. I mean, of our employees and our customers. Um, and so, you know, that requires. Think of, thinking about your program slightly differently. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, it's all good. It's all good. <laughs> Here they come. <laughs> and my kids come in and, and interrupt, but yeah. Absolutely. Okay. Uh, flexibility. In fact, Patricia 
um, from Goodyear Tire and Rubber Company is is uh, joining us and commented, you know, keeping flexibility in mind and being in the moment is extremely important. So thank you for sharing. Uh, uh, always important. Um, I would love, I want to ask you another question, but I yeah. um, want to encourage folks who are listening live. We have a few minutes left. Please, please, please ask questions. I should have uh, said that at the beginning of the session. Um, these are, uh, you know, we'd love to have a conversation. If we don't get to it in the next few minutes, we will certainly follow up with answers. So I encourage you to uh, uh, go into that chat and uh, toss us some questions. Um, but I wanted to, uh, uh, Brandon, as you think about 2020, are you right now kind of so in the moment of just thinking, how do I get through, what month are we, April? How do we get through April and, and May, June? Or mm -hmm. are you thinking, are you in a position of thinking what what does success look like at the end of 2020? Just how are you balancing that short as in, you know, next 30 days with even uh, even the year long targets? Where's your head there? So so I would even go further than that. I, I think we, we've we have started shifting our mindset to um, what does the new normal look like? It's, it's not about it's not about the next. So certainly we, we are still reacting in the next couple of months. And, and keeping our ear close to the ground, as they'd say, but we're also looking forward um, of how do we come, what, is it, what does the world look like? What does our world look like when we come out of this, right? <laughs> Clearly everybody's world is gonna be a little di different and, and ours is no, ours is not gonna be, uh, and ours is gonna be different also. Um, but some of the rapid changes that we've had to make just from a business priority standpoint, some of that's gonna stick. Um, not all of it, but some of it will, you know, mm -hmm. we sent, we sent, uh, we had all of our uh, contact centers had to go home and work from home. I don't know that that's going to stay completely, but certainly we'll leave an imprint. And and so we've accelerated our digital transformation. That's going to leave an imprint. We're not going to revert back. So we're looking at how do we enable and really go back and to some extent, um, go back to the drawing board and make sure that we're really building and designing these great journeys. Um, given these new assets that we have, given these new channels that we have. Um, and so what is that world going to look like in 6, 12, 18, 24? I don't know how long it's going to be. And it's probably going to continue to evolve around that. Um, but we're really looking at, at, at how we evolve both as an organization, as our strategy, and then at, with our listening throughout that. Yeah, absolutely. And I love... Um, these are just these are so these conversations so help me and I'm I'm curious on feedback from from others listening uh, because you know we get a chance to have this conversation and then you know I'm going to switch gears and think about how I'm prepping you know socializing some insights tomorrow and what action are we driving and how am I balancing the short and the long term what are we getting done in the in the coming you know 30 to 90 days and then how do things change so just uh hearing brandon the you know the respect and the focus on employees um mm -hmm. we can't deliver greatness for the customers if they're not the increased importance of uh whether your company is going through a digital transformation or you're digitally native but you're thinking about how to optimize there's no doubt listening through that channel and and getting that channel right um has never been more important and then thinking about your program in context of the business strategy in context of the environment uh because if you're tone deaf and off you know gathering a set of feedback and making a set of recommendations we all know what that looks like you you, you know you make your pitch and then time passes and nothing gets done so right. i love uh i love kind of how you're thinking about it yeah thank you any closing thoughts we've got one minute left just any um advice if folks are out there new to their role or they're just feeling overwhelmed or they're like, yeah. <laughs> they're, they're looking at their screen saying how am i going to get things done and how am i going to mobilize my organization when i'm not in the office just any sort of advice well i think i think first i'd say you know stay focused and um now more than ever is it, it's important to really understand what our customers are going through um and 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 find ways to get that you know be it be it talking to friends and family who may be your your customers or or, or uh you know just find ways of, of collecting even anecdotes around how customers are, are navigating through this um 
so that you can bring that back into the organization. Um, I'd also uh, say <laughs> stay, stay flexible. You may have kids running, as mine just did, um, and and we all we all have these interruptions. Uh, and and I think both staying flexible with yourself and with people that you're working with is 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 key, right? I mean, everybody's going through this in a different way and has a different impact. Um, the last thing I'll say around kind of CX in general is um, is it, it, it is, I, I, I'll just kind of say, it's now more than ever more important. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> the, these are unprecedented times. Um, you know, I, I will admit, uh, I don't think any business continuity planning session ever con conceptualized uh, a pandemic of this size and the impact that it's having globally. So, um, the business, most businesses are taking a lot of risk and may not know exactly how to navigate it. So now is more important than ever to make sure that you're bringing those insights in and making them heard. It's not just about having them sit on the shelf. It's about making sure that those stories are getting through and that you have a chance to make that impact, right? So don't be shy. Don't be shy about bringing those forward. I love it. Definitely uh, wise words to, to close on the importance of listening in the now, uh, mm -hmm. the importance of flexibility. While we're all in the same storm, um, we are in different boats. Yeah. A, a quote I heard yesterday that I thought was really striking. So being flexible um, and kind to yourself, your employees and your customers, and that uh, in so many ways, customer experience and the focus there has never mattered more than now. So um, all right, with that, uh, Brandon, Thank you. Thank you for taking uh, the time. Thank you for juggling the family to spend some time with us. I, I know yeah. this conversation just helps me, th you know, think about what I do next this afternoon. Um, hopefully for those uh, dialed in and listening, whether you're live or watching this on demand, uh, would love to hear from you. Please leave a comment on, you know, what was helpful, uh, what more you'd like to hear. Um, we'll be continuing this series. Uh, gosh, I, I'm going to real time hope I get this date right on 428, April 28th, Rhonda and I will talk about our uh, customer experience peer survey that we conducted uh, and share those results. Um, so look forward to seeing you there. With that, have a wonderful day, everyone. Brandon, thank you. Stay safe. Thank you. Um, yeah, you too. Motivated. Uh, keep your energy bucket filled up. And have a wonderful rest of your day.